we are already in the season of shaking and we, we do believe that uh, uh, every believer must be ready and we need to brace ourselves for this season. Uh, we spoke about shaking as in shaking of the spiritual realm and we said you are called to live a victorious life even in the realm of the spirit. So principalities, powers, authorities, spiritual forces must be overcome, praise the Lord Jesus. And for us to overcome spiritually, God has to shake principalities, authorities, and spiritual forces so that you may stand and live victoriously. Hallelujah. The battle that we are involved in has been fixed to our favor. Uh, victory is guaranteed as a Lord, because uh, you, before you go to battle, you are declared more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. So that means you are called to live a victorious life. It is fixed to your favor. Just talk to your, just talk to your neighbor and say, this battle is fixed to your favor. Hallelujah. And then we spoke about the shaking of economies and governments. Governments are being shaken. Uh, governments are being uh, challenged currently, beloved. Uh, and, and, and that is why it's going to be very important uh, that you, you be not just loyal to your political party, but first and foremost be loyal to the kingdom of God. Amen. Because your political party will be shaken as well. And we don't want you to think that it's the end of the world when your political party is shaken. Because there is a kingdom that we are inheriting and the Bible says that kingdom will never be shaken. Please speak to your neighbor again and say your kingdom, not your political party. Your kingdom will not be shaken. Uh, so it's very important that even as we go to vote, praise the Lord. We said when we vote, let us vote according to what is unshaken. Praise the Lord. Hey, because yeah. Every time I said I say this, I can feel the boy. Where's your boy? Um, but I pray that even in your vote, you may express that we are serving a kingdom that is unshaken. Praise the name of Jesus. And also, I want us to be very aware that there's going to be a shift in the atmosphere. What we know to be the rule of, of, of the hour or to be the rule of the day, God is going to shake. America will shake, South Africa will shake. And, and please, you know, brace yourself for that. There's going to be a major shake up that will take place. Hallelujah. And I want us to also appreciate that the house of the Lord will be shaken too. It is already shaken. And we spoke about the shaking of the house of the Lord with regards to uh, uh, even the leadership of the church. We said judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And when it begins in the house of the Lord, it's going to deal with leadership. First and foremost, the leadership. All fake prophets, fake apostles and so-called bishops, self-anointed and self-ordained God is going to expose them hallelujah mm -hmm. so this is a season when God is going to vindicate those that are his own amen mm -hmm. hallelujah please don't proclaim yourself don't ordain yourself mm -hmm. may you be affirmed by God himself may you have the step of approval from heaven mm -hmm. not from men amen mm -hmm. and we are going to also see ministries shaken your personal ministry will be shaken mm -hmm. let me say this God is not just shaking and God's structures, it's also shaking God's structures. Yeah. When shaking happens, God will not discriminate. He will shake even God's things so that when the shaking is over, that which is godly will remain standing. Yes, Hallelujah. So when, when the storms come, the house that is built on the rock, or, or on the rock, the house that is built on the rock needs to be verified that the foundation was right. And the shaking will verify that foundation. Hallelujah. So it's not only the houses that are built on sand that will be shaken. Um, and, 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 and I want you to appreciate we're going to see a lot of reshuffling in the house of the Lord because there's a lot of mixture. The time has come for the true worshippers of God to worship God in spirit and in truth. Holy. 
for this is the kind of worshippers that the Father is seeking after. Hallelujah. And I want us to look into two last forms of shaking that uh, we are going to be experiencing after economies and governments and, and churches have been shaken. One last shaking that we are going to experience during the church age is the shaking that took place when Jesus hung on the cross. Hallelujah. I want us to see this shaking, uh, Pastor Knox, if we may read uh, about this shaking. This is when Jesus died. Uh, amen. 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 Um, this is when Jesus died. And, 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 and I want us just to see this. I think it's in the book of... Uh, <coughs> My, my thing is taking too long to open you, please bear with me. Um, but let's go to look to Matthew chapter 27, verses 15 to 54. Matthew 27, verses 50 to 54. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Mm. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Mm. The earth shook, yes. the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. Praise God. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified mm. and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Hallelujah. This is another shaking that took place when Jesus hung on the cross. The Bible says the earth was shaken. In actual fact, some scientists have gone back in time to actually, because you can, in, 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 in seismology, you can check major earthquakes that have uh, uh, taken place uh, in, in our planet. And it's quite interesting that there is an earthquake that actually verifies that indeed on the day Jesus was crucified, the whole earth was shaken. And when that happened, the Bible says the, the, the graves were open. Hallelujah. But notice that the dead, those that were dead in righteousness, did not resurrect on the day of crucifixion. I want you to read the text very carefully. Why? Because Scripture had to be fulfilled that Jesus will be the first fruit of resurrection. Hallelujah. Notice that on the day Jesus died, graves were shaken. But the dead in righteousness could only rise after his resurrection. I don't know if you saw that. Maybe it's Pastor Dux. If you can just uh, 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 read verse 53 so that we can be clear about that. The tombs of verse 53 yes mm -hmm. they came out of the tombs after jesus resurrection do you notice that only after jesus's resurrection did they come out of the but the shaking took place on the day jesus was crucified mm -hmm. hallelujah so now here's the good news there's going to be another shaking that will take place and that's when jesus shall appear hallelujah tombs will be shaken graves will be shaken and the Bible says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And those of us who will be alive on that day, we will be caught up with them in the sky. So there's going to be another major shaking. So this is going to be a very interesting day. When Jesus shall come, the whole earth will shake. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that walk in the graveyard, all these graveyards that you see, beloved, they will have to open up. Praise the name of Jesus. It's almost like the fulfillment of the book of Psalm. Lift up your gates, O ye, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Let the King of Glory come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord, mighty in battle, is the King of Glory. So the graves will respond when the Ancient of Days shall appear. The one who is mighty in battle. Hallelujah. And then we cannot wait for that day, the day of our resurrection, or the resurrection of those who will be dead in Christ at his appearing. Hallelujah. Another shaking that is going to take place 
is going to be during the time of tribulation. Let's read Pastor Nelson in Matthew 24, verse 21. I want you to appreciate by this time, the faithful church will be gone. Amen. So this shaking will be the last shaking before the establishment of the millennial kingdom during which Jesus will rule here on earth. So this will be a seven year shaking. If you notice the sin judgment, the trumpet judgments and the bow judgments, almost all those judgments, those judgments, they have a shaking involved in them. Three major uh, uh, judgments will take place during the time of tribulation. Almost all of them have an earthquake, a major earthquake that takes place. Why? God is judging nations for their rebellion against God. This is what Jesus summarizes regarding this time. Uh, this is the summary of how, of how things will be like. Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, My God. and never to be equaled again. My God, you see that? That's a very seismic event that is going to be taking place. In other words, all shakings that the earth has experienced combined, they are nothing to compared to what's coming. That is why you need to be out of here. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't intend to hang around to see this shaking. So that declaration you have just said is biblical because this is what it says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. The Bible says, since you have kept my word to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Hallelujah. So you are promised that you will you'll be spared from this hour of shaking that will come. It will be a seven year shaking, beloved. The Bible says that time will never be compared to any other time that has been that has befallen our planet before. Isaiah, maybe not if you can go to Isaiah chapter 26, verses 19 to 21. Please say, I want us to get used to the public reading of scriptures. Amen. Amen. This, this is the instruction that Paul gives to Timothy that, uh, that you, you must commit yourself to public reading of scriptures. Uh, so let's read Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21. But your dead will live. Lord, their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Do you hear that? So verse 19 is about the resurrection of the Russians. Amen. When the earth gives up her dead, those that are that, that will have died in the Lord. So shaking is going to happen, and then the dead in Christ will rise up. This is what is prophesied in the Old Testament by the prophet Isaiah. And then verse 20. Go, my people, mm -hmm. enter your rooms and shut the door behind you. Now, this is the rapture of the church prophesied in the Old Testament. Notice, go, my people, enter your rooms. What did Jesus say in the book of John chapter 14? I'm going to prepare a place. In my father's house are many rooms. And that is where he's going to prepare a place for you. And this will be your hiding place, your hiding place. So that you are not participating in the shaking that will be taking place uh, uh, during the time of uh, the seven year tribulation. Hallelujah. What do you do when you have entered your rooms? Hide yourselves from a, for a little while until his wrath has passed by. This this passage of scripture should not confuse us. So Zanmatanya, the big debate now is the church going to be here on this planet during the time of tribulation. This passage of scripture seals it. Go, oh, my people, enter your rooms. Where are those rooms? Those rooms, there is no scripture that says those rooms are here on the planet. Jesus says, in my father's house are many rooms. Hallelujah. And Jesus was not referring to some place on the planet, but he was referring to his father's house. And where is his father's house? In heaven. I don't know why people are so scared of going to heaven. It's going to be a safe place for you. Hallelujah. It's going to be a safe. There are Christians who just want to hang around during the time of tribulation. People love drama. People just love drama. I don't know why you want to see the drama. 
of the shaking of this planet. It's not going to be funny. It's not going to be funny at all. So the best, the best place to be during this time is to be in your room. Hallelujah. Turn to your name and say, your room is waiting for you. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. Do you understand that? Because the time of tribulation is the time of the pouring out of God's wrath. And God says, I'm going to hide you. Do we have four shadows in the Old Testament? Yes, we do. What are those four shadows? It is Noah. Noah was taken to the ark, prison of Jesus. And that was a safe place because the righteous will never be punished when God begins to pour, to pour out his wrath upon the unrighteous. Do we have another example? Yes, we do. Lot is another example. When fire and brimstone was falling upon Sodom, Lord was taken to a safe place called Zohar. Praise the name of Jesus. So God, and then this is what Peter says, the Apostle Peter. He says, if God knows how to rescue the Russians, surely he will rescue us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is clear. Yeah. This is very clear theology. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is very clear. I don't know why people are so adventurous. They, 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 they just want to, 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 to hang around here. I mean, I don't know. This, this, this thing... <laughs> This thing, this thing is heavy. If the Bible says these times will be unequal to any other time that has befallen men, no. beloved, definitely this is not a season to be around this planet. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, you can complete the two to verse 21. Mark. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling mm -hmm. to punish the people of the earth for their sins. Mm. The earth will disclose the blood shed on it. Mm -hmm. The earth will conceal its slain no longer. Mm. You see, the blood of every person that has been murdered, every murder victim, every baby that has been aborted, every blood that has been shed innocently, that blood is still speaking to God. Just like the blood of, uh, of, of Abel was speaking to God. So that blood is speaking and there will be a time when God will say, I've heard your cry. That's why the Bible says the life of a, an organism is in its blood. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even after we have killed the person, the blood continues to speak. And that God will come during the time of tribulation and he will punish the earth for every innocent blood that was shed. Hallelujah. And this is what the word of God says here. The earth will disclose the blood shed on it. So it, it, it's, it's going to be heavy. It's going to be heavy. You know, there are, I was looking at Senzo Mayua's case, for example. They're still struggling to find out who killed the guy. And there are so many mystery cases. But on the day when God releases his wrath upon the earth, believe me, justice will be done. Hallelujah. So I want us to understand that it is not God's plan that you be around during this time because he will be dealing with murderers. He will be dealing with those that are rebellious against his word. He will be dealing with those who are idolaters, those that are defiant against the word of God. And that's not your portion. I want us to look at how the church should prepare herself for the time of shaking. This is very important, beloved. How do we prepare for the time of shaking? If the church is not going to be spared from this season of shaking on this on this side of the rapture, uh, as we are seeing already, many ministries and many uh, churches are being shaken. Uh, we need to know how to prepare. Number one, repentance, repentance, hallelujah. Repentance, sanctification. Repentance, sanctification, maybe just say those two words to your neighbor so that they register. Say repentance, repentance. Sanctification. sanctification. Repentance is very important in this season. No wonder the devil has been fighting the message of repentance. Even through preachers. I never thought I would see a day when preachers speak against the message of repentance. Why? Because the devil is using even preachers to come against the message of repentance so that the church is rendered unprepared for the time of shaking. Hallelujah. Sanctification, what does that mean? To be sanctified means to be separated unto God. 
to be separated unto God, to be cleansed and separated unto God. Hallelujah. And I want us to read a, a pastor of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Let's do the public reading of scripture here. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, mm -hmm. sealed with this inscription. Yeah. The Lord knows those who are his. Mm -hmm. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Yeah. You see, the Bible says those that confess the name of Jesus must turn away from wickedness. Now, how come a preacher comes and tells you that uh, uh, you, you don't have to turn from wickedness? When the Bible says, if you confess the name of Jesus, turn away from wickedness. Repentance, this is repentance, turning away. This is repentance. And I want us therefore to embrace the practice of repentance. And the practice of repentance, beloved, it does not necessarily mean that you are being demoted from your position of righteousness. Righteous people repent. Repentance is not demotion, but repentance is an act of humility. You humble yourself and you say, Father, I acknowledge that I am your child, but I also want to humble, humbly acknowledge that I also have blind spots. There are times when I do things unknowingly, and there are times when I consciously sin against you. And I want to repent of that. Hallelujah. So those in actual fact, if you really want to know those that are called by the name of Jesus, those that are known by God, let, let me talk about, let, let, me probably, let me just say this to you. There is a ceiling that is happening. God is sealing his own. God is putting a, a, a stamp of approval upon those that are his. Because there are many that are confessing that Jesus is Lord, but not all of them are his. In Matthew chapter 7, the Bible says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, you go to notice in these last days that people who are truly saved, people that are known in heaven, people whose names are truly written in the Lamb's book of life, those people have a posture of repentance. Let's go again. Arrogant people who don't want to, to, to repent. And this you are going to see even in a practical situation. People who do not want to listen when they are being disciplined. People, unteachable people. Those are signs, beloved, that you, you are actually running a risk of your name being blotted out of the book of life. Because it happens that sometimes names are written and names are blotted out. When you receive Jesus Christ sincerely as your Lord and as your Savior, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But if you insist on living a life of rebellion against God, your name can be blotted out. Now that's again another theology that a lot of people are struggling with. When Jesus says to one of the churches, I'm about to spill you out of my mouth. In other words, your name is about to be blotted out. Now, how do we know that your name remains in the Lamb's Book of Life? When you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, you, love, you live a life of humility. Yeah. When you are told this is wrong, as a believer you should not do that, you don't become rebellious. But you have a posture of repenting. That is why Paul says to Timothy, the Lord knows those that are his. How, how does he know them? They are turning away from wickedness. If they confess the name of the Lord, they are turning away from wickedness. This is their posture. Because it's actually selling you short. It's actually revealing. That have the seal of the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. So there are people that are being designated by God even in this hour. conferences. We have a lot of Christians in tent meetings, but not all of them are known by God. That is why on the day of judgment, the Bible tells us that there will be those who will say, but I was casting devils in your name. I preached in your name. I prophesied in your name. And Jesus will say, but I never knew you. Why? Because while you are moving in the gifts, 
gifts of the spirit and by the way please remember that the gift is not removed even if you live a life of rebellion against God if you are a sinner you will always be a sinner <laughs> if you are a good preacher and you have a gift of orgy if you have a gift of articulation you will always be articulate even if you are fallen and this should not confuse you Bazaar. That is why there are people who continue to operate in their gifts when they are rebellious against God. And God says, listen, you are doing this, you are singing well. You are preaching well, but I don't know you. Because I only know those that are repenting, those that are turning away from wickedness. Hallelujah. Let's read about sanctification. Uh, Pastor Knox, let's look at Revelation chapter 18. Chapter, uh, chapter 18 verses 4 to 8 so this is what the church should be doing during this time amen then i heard another voice from heaven say come out of her my people oh my God. so that you will not share in her sins mm. so that you will not receive any of her plagues yeah. for her sins are piled up to heaven yeah. and god has remembered her crimes mm -hmm. give back to her as she has given Pay her back double for what she has done. My God. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Mm. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. Mm. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. Mm. I'm not a widow. I will never mourn. Yeah. Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her. Mm. Death, mourning, and famine she will be consumed by fire for mighty is the lord god who judges her so babylon will be judged and babylon represents the system of rebellion against god it represents the system the social structure the economic structure even the political structure that is rebellious against god it also includes the religious structure that is a symbol of rebellion against god hallelujah now we are instructed by god to come out of her Amen. Amen. Come out of her. Dissociate yourself from anything that is a symbol of rebellion against God. And this is your duty. You need to begin in 2024 to identify things in your life that are a symbol of rebellion against God. Identify them. Yeah. Don't be passive. I said to you, it's amazing that you can fall into sin because of laziness. Laziness is a horrible thing because when you are lazy, you don't even you don't even give yourself time to analyze what is a symbol of rebellion against God in my life. Amen. And I want to even bring your attention to some of your entertainment, things you entertain yourself with. If they are a symbol of rebellion against God, dissociate yourself. And this is a season to be to, 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 to don't 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 be don't don't shy away from being finicky. Don't shy away from, from, from scrutinizing things. Because God demands accuracy. It's not legalism. But it demands accuracy. Because you see, you cannot worship him in spirit and in truth without accuracy. His truth. His truth is not all over. His truth is straight. And his truth is accurate. Hallelujah. So if there are things in our lives, you know, you, you need to even check your entertainment. Things I entertain myself with. The movies I watch. The music I listen to. It, it, are there signs of rebellion? Because you'll be shocked that was somebody who are actually listening to music with vulgar language, for example. Some of you are listening to music that, that, that curses God. But you lie, you, you just enjoy the vibe, you know. The rhythm is too good. Have you, ever, have you ever noticed those songs? Songs that have a very good melody and good punch lines and, 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 and but the, you know there is a line that is not God glorified. Yeah. But you groove along, you know, you, you just groove along because you see the rest of the song is just too good. Yeah. I beseech you by the message of the Lord. Come out. Yeah. Amen. Come out. Come out. Come out. If there is anything, even if you are watching a movie and you realize that this is not God, God glorifying in the middle of the movie, you can come out. Yes. Come out. My wife and I have walked away from movies. You paint man because someone recommended, hey, this is a good movie, watch it. 
and you pay money, you buy, you walk away with your popcorn. <laughs> you walk away with your popcorn because you, you realize that my word, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here and the name of the Lord is being blasphemed here. And you have to, you have to walk away with your, with your popcorn. Amen. Amen. So I want us to, to, to be very accurate. When we are, listen, this is like spring cleaning, yes. when you are When you are cleaning up your house, when you are clearing your garage, you do it meticulously. Amen. Because you don't want to keep things that are not supposed to be kept. Because there are things that are supposed to be in the rubbish bin in that house. But we have kept them for years. So that's the point of spring cleaning. To keep things, you know, to get rid of things that were kept unnecessarily. Hallelujah. So that's what we do even when we are walking through a sanctification process. Hallelujah. We are being separated unto the Lord. Amen. You don't want to be guilty by association. That is going to be happening a lot in this season. People are going to be found guilty by association. So this business of saying they are doing it but I'm not participating. I'm just hanging around with them. We spoke about this with our young people yesterday as we're preparing them for university. That in university there are, there are crowds where you probably might be pressured to be part of. But don't say they, 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 they drink, they do drugs, I just don't participate, but I enjoy their company. No, you can't. You need to be very meticulous about the company you keep. Scrutinize, hallelujah. Amen. Separation also involves social media platforms. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know that those people are against the name of the Lord, but you just love following them. I said to you, there are people that you have no business following. And, 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 and I have a problem with Umzalwanoti, but I'm bored. When you have so much scripture to read, have you finished the Bible? Have you finished the Bible? How come you are telling us that you are bored? If you say yes, Pastor, finish the Bible, have you have you started again? Because you see, you, you need to you need to start again. When you finish, when, when you when you reach the book of Revelation, start again. Start again. Because you'll be amazed how many things you've missed when you read the first time. If you say, Pastor, I've, I've gone through the Bible three times, go for the fourth time. Go for the fourth time. Why do you think the Bible says meditate upon scripture day and night? Yeah. Notice that the Bible does not ask you, have you finished reading it? Yeah. But you are instructed to meditate upon the word of God day and night, irrespective of how many times you've read it. Hallelujah. So please dissociate yourself even from social media platforms. Stop following popular influencers. But you know what their values, their values are against God. Their values are against the, the teaching of scripture. But you have a tanda. And you do for to please be willing to sacrifice humor for the sake of holiness. But just he is so funny. <laughs> he is so funny. Please, if they are human, is against the word of God, please, please dissociate yourself. And I will even speak about Christian comedy. Now, I might lose some of you. I guess he couldn't believe that Christian comedy. As far as Utata is in this hole and make fun of them. Amen. Uh -huh. I get it. Amen. Amen. Can I just say to you, you know, it, it is not a good thing, Basabah, to take that which is sacred and make comedy out of it. You know, we, we are we are cheapening the things of the spirit. There are times when you see very strange jokes you hear a very strange joke joke about something that is so sanctified something that is so sacred but someone is just making fun of it and the church is laughing 
Where was the I think Tina sitting and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's what we did. Because let me let me be, I'll be blunt with you. Let me be blunt with you. There is no room for Christian comment in our worship. There is no room for Christian comment. I'm convinced. I've been meditating on this for years. There is no room for Christian comment. Many times when we are when, when we when we want something that is dynamic. We resort to things that are not going to help us. And that includes Christian comment. And hear me and hear me well. I'm not saying that there's no laughter in the house of the Lord. There must be laughter in the house of the Lord. I believe there must be laughter. But to have people that are invited as guests, that are making fun of scriptures and we're laughing, they're making fun of worship experiences and, 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 and we're laughing and we're applauding. And sometimes these things happen to dilute the way that was preached. There are times when you find a Christian comedy coming after a preaching of the word. And people remember comedy more than they remember the word that was preached. And can I tell you, some of these comedians are supposed to be preachers of the word. They are misdirected. Some of them are gifted preachers of the word, but the enemy has just blinded them. Some of them are worshippers. Some of them are worshippers. So when you applaud them, you are saying continue in your misdirection. Because those are misdirected gifts. So we need to, if I could have a moment with them, I will tell them that you are a preacher, stop what you are doing. You are a worshipper, stop what you are doing. I will never forget, I, I think I shared this story with, with some of the, 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 the a Christian comedian who's a powerful worshipper. He was leading a song, but the idea was to make a joke in the middle of the song. And what happened is that the church fell, fell into the presence of the Lord while he was leading worship. And by the time he tried to stop the church so that he can slot a joke, the church was already in worship. He had to use carnal methods to stop the church from worshipping so that he could deliver a joke that he wanted to deliver. It was a horrible thing that I could tell that was already even struggling to laugh because some already were in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes some will start with a sermon as part of comment. They will start with a sermon. And you can hear that this is something that is worth preaching. But someone needs to slot in a joke in the midst of it. Where was the Lord? No, we can't play with the things of God. No, we can't play with the things of God. Actually, Paul says to Timothy, when you preach the word of God, preach it with all seriousness. Yes. Hallelujah. So, Ukulukula says, and hear me and hear me well. I'm not saying there is no humor. There is humor in the house of the Lord. There is humor in the house of the Lord, but we dare not make comedy of sacred things. Yes. I want us to go, uh, Pastor Nels, to 2 Timothy chapter 6, verses 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 18. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 6, 6. Verses 16 to 18. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? Mm. For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. Yes. Mm. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Mm. Touch no unclean thing, mm -hmm. and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. One of the reasons why we have not experienced the father heart of God is because we have not separated. Yo. Separation is key for us to have God express himself as our father. Notice that he says, come out of them first. Be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and then I will receive you. In other words, we are walking with a lot of church folk that have not been received by God. There's a lot of God. You see, humble, see, calls, I wonder we have not been received. 
Because God is saying, separate yourself. Come out from amongst them. Praise the name of Jesus. And then he says, I can then be a father to you. This is important. Sanctification is important so that we can experience the father heart of God as sons and daughters in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Separation. Separation. And then I want us to look at something else in this, uh, in, 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 just in the context of separation. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verses 20 to 22. I want to talk about the importance of purity and materiality. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Yeah. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Mm. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, mm. Mm. made holy useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Hallelujah. Praise Flee the Lord. the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the, on the Lord out of a pure heart. This is a very important scripture. The Bible tells us here that in a large house there are articles of gold and silver. There are articles of wood and clay. I want to talk about the material nature of these articles. That's materiality. The material nature of these articles actually declares their purpose, original purpose. Silver and gold is for noble and special purposes. Amen. You don't serve people with articles of silver and gold on daily basis. But on daily basis, you will serve them on clay or wood. Amen. In the context of the passage. So we can then understand that the materiality of each vessel signifies the assignment that the, the creator had in mind. Hallelujah. So when it comes to material uh, silver, material gold, you can understand that these were meant for special purposes originally. But notice that the idea here is not necessarily materiality, but it is purity. Purity. Listen, let me open the open the phone there, Acts verse 21. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. It does not matter whether you are gold or silver, whether you are wood or clay. If you are cleansed, listen to the Lord, if you are cleansed, then you will be used for special purpose, for, for, for special purposes. In other words, wood and clay that has been cleansed is better than silver and gold that is, that is contaminated. Let me say that again. Let me, I want you, I want you to, to, to grasp that. Wood that was originally meant for common purpose. If that wood has been cleansed, it will serve a special and noble purpose if gold is not willing to be cleansed. Let, let, let me tell you about the significance of gold, you know, if, for you to understand the materiality of these vessels. Uh, here's the thing. Gold represents that which is desirable. In other words, this is a high, a highly gifted somebody. It is someone with unique gifts because gold is uncommon. That's what I got. Wood is common. Gold is uncommon. So when you talk about gold, you are talking about someone, number one, who has natural splendor. Natural splendor. Sometimes these people are even, when they appear, you, they have a presence. Sometimes because of their natural beauty, their people are just beautiful. And some of them are gifted. Their gifts are very attractive. You know, everybody wants to be like them. When they sing, when they preach, everybody wants to be like them. That is a sign of gold materiality. Now, wood represents that which is common, you know, common gifts. What you do can be done by most people. You probably don't command much authority in terms of uh, your presence. When you appear, your presence is common. 
But God is saying, when I begin to shake things, I demand repentance. And I demand sanctification. Even if you are gold, your golden nature does not mean anything if you are not cleansed. Because of a time. You have to be cleansed. So we are now living in a season when God is going to be using clay and wood. That is willing to be cleansed in the midst of silver and gold that is arrogant. If silver and gold has pride, God is going to overlook it and use wood and clay that is coming humbly before God and say, Father, I'm willing to be cleansed by you. Praise the name of Jesus. So please don't tell yourself what into am special. God will overlook people with special gifts if they are not willing to be sanctified. And I want you to, 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 to appreciate that this is very important. If you actually read about this in the, the book of Ezekiel 28, you know, just to summarize, you find that Lucifer was such a person. If you look, if you read in the book of Ezekiel 28, the Bible says you were a seal of perfection. When people looked, when, when other angels looked at Lucifer, they saw a, a seal of perfection, full of wisdom. Listen to this, perfect in beauty. What is going to overlook him? Because your beauty is, is actually now pushing you to a place where you are unrepentant. People love me very, very. And let me say this to you. Gold is popular. Gold is more popular than wood. Guess what you will choose? You choose gold. Gold also represents people who are popular. Popular ministers. But unrepentant. You have a large following on Facebook. Large following on Instagram, but you are unrepentant. This is God is going to overlook you if you are not willing to walk in repentance. And I want you to understand, Bazaran and Tell Ushadoko, I'm saying this with the wisdom of the Lord and based on observation. If you have natural attributes which are very special, please be aware at times it's hard to repent. Near the time. If you have natural attributes that are appreciated by everyone be aware that the natural thing that could happen in that situation is that you will find it hard to repent why because everyone is affirming you everyone is giving you their approval when god is saying repent of this repent of this and you get confused why should i repent of this when everyone says thumbs up and many times when you fall into sin, you get even more thumbs up. Why? Because the enemy is intentionally surrounding you with people that will give you affirmation when you're supposed to be lying prostrate before God and say, Father, please forgive me, cleanse me. That is what caught up with the devil, with Lucifer one time. He was a symbol of beauty. He was perfect in beauty, the Bible says, up until wickedness was found in him. Praise the name of Jesus. So we're going to see a reversal in these last days, Pastor when that which was meant for noble purposes is overlooked, and then God is going to be using wood for noble purposes. How does this happen? Maybe not for us to understand this, because some people might think, hey, put this, are you sure? And, and by the way, don't confuse the materiality with quality. In the book of First Corinthians, chapter three, in actual fact, please don't, don't confuse the scriptures. In the book of First Corinthians, chapter three, the Bible speaks of gold, works of gold, works of silver, works of straw, works of clay, and the Bible tells us that when these works are burned, some of them will survive the process of burning. When we talk about what Paul is addressing in the book of Timothy here, we are talking about your nature as a believer. Your naturalness as a believer. Some of us are born gold because gold, gold is not something that you just make. 
Gold is gold. You cannot translate wood into gold. You understand? You cannot translate wood into gold. So here, it is something, these are attributes that you are born with. So some of us are born common and some of us are born rare. But here is the grace of God. This is where grace comes in. It does not matter whether you are born noble or born ignoble. But when you cleanse yourself, you qualify to be used for noble purposes. I love the equalizing nature of grace. Yeah, so it, it, what I'm saying tonight is that don't go around with shiny tool because of your noble attributes when you are unrepentant. So when the, the, what Paul is addressing in the book of Timothy is people that are born with certain qualities. Common qualities, others red qualities. Others common qualities, others very desirable qualities. And let me touch even on physical beauty. Physical beauty. Even if you are blessed with physical beauty, please be careful. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. Because physical beauty sometimes can cause people to think that everybody is less than them. Because of the physical attributes that you have. So it's not just the gift, even in physical. Because if you check here, the Bible says, Lucifer was perfect in beauty. And that contributed to his confusion. Why can't I challenge God? Because I am probably even as, as splendorous as he is. There were people that were whispering things into his ears. You are so beautiful. You, you can be equal with God. And that confused him. Now, how do you tell someone who perceives themselves to be so beautiful to actually repent? When you're above somebody, everybody else. So please be careful of that. Now, but when it comes to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, when the Bible speaks about the, 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 the works of silver, the works of gold, there you determine by the intentions of the heart and the purity of the heart what works you produce. If the intentions of the heart are pure, you're producing works of gold. So please don't confuse that scripture with, 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 with what is in Timon. So 1 Corinthians is about the quality of your work. If the quality is good, you are doing works of gold. If the quality of your work is poor, you are doing things with wrong motives. You are doing things begrudgingly. You are doing things with a posture of rebellion against God, but you do it anyway. That's the work of straw. And when it's subjected to fire on the judgment day, it will burn. The Bible says you will escape to heaven, but your work will burn. And it will be as though you did nothing. Why? Because you are serving with wrong motives. You are serving out of a competitive spirit. You are competing. You want to prove that you, you can do this better than anyone else. There's a time. And that is the work of straw. Even if man is applauding, but that's the work of straw as far as heaven is concerned. So that is the difference. So it's quality of work in First Corinthians chapter 3. But when we talk about these things in, 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 in the book of Timothy, we are looking at the materiality of who you are, the, your nature. But the issue there is sanctity or purity. You must be purified. Now, how does this translate biblically? Because scripture must, 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 must uh, 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 be interpreted by another scripture. Let's go not to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 30, as we conclude. Not, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's 26 to 30, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Tell me, tell me, interrupt as we read. So reflect on how you were born. Reflect on your naturalness the day you receive Christ as the Lord and Savior. Please check with us as we read along. Amen. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Yeah, what? There was nothing special about you. No. Eh? Many of you were not special the day you received Christ as the Lord and Savior. Yes? Not many were influential. That's not common. Yeah. Not many were of noble birth. That's where the nobility issue comes. You were not noble, some of you were, were, were in your naturalness. You were just a common person. You, you were not someone that would appear and people say, wow. Yeah. You know, you did not wow anybody. Yeah. 
<laughs> Amen. But listen, the story gets better. But God chose the foolish things ah, of the world. Ah, that's where it is now. You see, you were not gold in your naturalness. You were not silver in your naturalness. Maybe you were wood or clay. But God chose you in your foolishness. He chose you. Amen. Yes. He chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. Mm -hmm. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Now he's choosing wood. He is choosing clay to shame silver and gold because of their arrogance. There's a tell you. We must have been a man that you never thought God would use powerfully. That is why you should never fight for any position in church. You don't even fight for platforms. Don't fight for platforms. God will open doors in his time. In his Kairos moment. He will take foolish things and then he will exalt them. Yeah. God chose the lowly things of this world mm -hmm. and the despised things. Just like wood and clay despised. But God is choosing them now. Yes, what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And the things that are not to nullify the things that are. Come on. Mm -hmm. So that no one may boast before him. The idea here is that no one must be arrogant. Because sometimes when silver is being mightily used, it says it's because I am naturally beautiful. I have natural attributes. I have special qualities that wood doesn't have. I have special qualities that clay doesn't have. So it's very easy for silver and gold to be boastful. So is like he will, he will, he will lift you up so that when God uses you in your heart, you know to Him be honor, to Him be glory, because I could not have done this in my strength. There is nothing in my naturalness that is pointing to the greatness that God has catapulted me into. He has pushed me into greatness, and there is nothing in my natural strength that can that can be attributed to. Hallelujah. So. In humility, That's what I got. it. Don't be full of yourself. Walk in humility. Don't even complain. Why am I not given a chance? Why am I not? Let me tell you something. When God begins to shake things, even people that are not given a chance, they will have a platform. When God begins to raise foolish things, things that are overlooked, things that are despised, God will do it. Hallelujah. Yeah? It is because of him that you are in Christ, Jesus, mm -hmm. who, has become, who has become for us wisdom from God. Hallelujah. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Praise the name of Jesus. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in general, the important thing is not your materiality. In other words, the material that you are made of. The important thing is sanctification, sanctity, purity. If ever you want to actually know the most important message that you should be embracing in this time, it is the message of holiness. The message of holiness. Because even your gift, your gift, no matter how powerful it is, is going to be overlooked. Yeah. What's happening in America, what's happening in America right now, Bazalane, America is being shaken. All these gifted preachers who are not living a life of repentance, God is exposing them. God is exposing gifted people who are not living a life of repentance. Why? Because God is saying, I'm tired of arrogant silver and gold. I'm not telling to wood. I'm not turning to claim that is repentant. And that is why then Paul will say in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, we have this, we have this treasure in jars of clay. Not jars of gold. Not jars of silver, but we have these treasures in jars of clay. Why? So that we may show forth the all-surpassing power that is from God and not from us. 
the beautiful thing about wood and clay is that when God begins to move powerfully through it, it has no choice but to say, Lord, I'm only wood. To you be honor and glory. Father, I'm just clay. To you be honor and glory. When God does the same thing through gold, gold that is not sanctified, it gets, it, it gets confused. I'm beautiful. I'm gifted. Should I really give God the glory? Hallelujah. I said to you, there is a preacher in Zimbabwe who said, I'm, I'm more gifted than God. I'm more gifted than God. And even that attitude tells that why should I give him glory? Because I'm more gifted than him. So, th th this is the problem that we have in the church. We, we have a situation where wood is wishing to be gold. Please, don't change what God made you to be. What you just need to do, allow God to sanctify you in your naturalness. So, I'm going to tell you that. In your naturalness, be sanctified by God. Here's the power of sanctification. The power of sanctification will deal with things that are not supposed to be in you. So that that which is supposed to be in you remains. Hallelujah. And it is in that state that God will begin to use you mightily. Hallelujah. I grew up, I grew up being in Amashon. I was extremely shy. Extremely shy. And I, I could not speak clearly. I, I, I was tongue-tied most of the time, you know, and, and, and that is why I prefer to keep quiet most of the time. I was, I was very quiet. I'm not sure if one would say they will remember that growing up in class. I, we used to attend home sales in, in, in his house, and, and, and <laughs> during testimony time, there was a testimony service. In, our voices will just shake. And, and he, his mom used to say, okay, in this Ophagas, yeah. you will all testify. And during a testimony time, literally some of us will cry because we didn't know what to say. Yeah. And when, when, when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that is one of the things we had to pray for. And we said, Father, we are wood. <laughs> there is nothing special about us. We are wood, Lord. You know, just, 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 just cleanse us of God. Anything that is not of you, remove it so that you can use us for your glory. As a pastor, one of the things I had to pray for, I said, Father, help me not to be so shy. How do I shepherd the floor when I'm so shy? I had to tell God about it. I had to say, Father, I'm, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable in the crowds. And the Lord had to chisel things out of me. I came as a man as wood. There is nothing special about me. Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing, nothing. You know, and 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 I had to learn English in the house of the Lord. <laughs> you know, ma, ma, I used to. <laughs> I have I have four sisters, and and uh, you know, my my myself and Mam Kumano, we went to a, a, a township school. But from, from Tobe to, to Aya and Skulile, they went to white schools. And in the house, there was a serious problem in terms of English. <laughs> serious clashes. Mam Kumal and I, we would come with our own Lokshin, Lokshin English, you know. Hey, de, 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 you know de, de. <laughs> and then there are these model C kids, Latin, you know. I remember during a devotion, during a devotion, I was sharing on the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, with my with my band to education in English, I said, "For the ear of the Lord is not too dull to hear." And then and then I said, "No, no, 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 my brother, no, no, no. That, that, that word is dull, my brother. That word is dull." She interrupted my sermon. To this day, she still corrects my English. To this day. The point is, there was nothing special about us when we got saved, was it? Nothing. God had to mold everything in us, everything, literally. Even to stand up. Some of you think, why do you always sweat when you, when you preach to us? I'm scared. I'm not used to this thing. Every time I have to pray for grace and say, Father, give me grace. Give me grace, oh God, I am wood. 
Yes. I don't have gold attributes. I'm not at home here. I'm not at home here. I need every ounce of grace. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this so that every wood in this house may not overlook itself. And I'm not saying this to condemn gold or silver because I know there's gold and silver. Let me speak to gold and silver. Please, if you can dare to walk in holiness, you will move even in higher dimensions than some of us. If gold, if gold can dare to walk in repentance, if silver can dare to walk in holiness, my word, my word, you will move mountains that nobody can move. It's just that it's rare for gold to be humble. It's very rare for silver to be humble. Let's stand on our feet. I want us just to raise our hands and 